Hello everyone, William Oaks here with Pegasus Technology Solutions here in another video. This video is part of our AI e-commerce toolkit series. So essentially I was talking to the client the other day and uh, they essentially wanted to remove Typebot and have everything done directly through NADN. So this is kind of um, what we came up with. It's a multi-agent chatbot. Um, so essentially what we're doing is we have our chat coordinator um, and then we have our lead capture agent and then our general inquiry agent. Um, so let me just give you guys a quick overview of how the current um, Typebot stuff works if you haven't seen it. All right, so this is the home page. Um, so essentially when Typebot loads, um, it's gonna ask you for a first name, last name, email, phone number. Um, and then it's gonna give us a bunch of boxes of what we can do. So what I did is I created a session handover um, with a custom script between Typebot and N8N. And so when you click this button, um, it automatically launches the um, chatbot. Um, and that's how it worked for the client. And essentially what would happen, um, if I put some text in here, um, essentially what would happen is it would give me a bunch of metadata, it would give me the user and all that information. Um, for an example, we have Hello William. And I like this method a lot. I think it works really well. And um, it's something that we've used in the past for other clients. Um, and it allows us to kind of isolate the bots really well. Um, the client didn't necessarily want that. So what we ended up doing is we built this. And um, so essentially with the chat coordinator, um, we're not gonna be able to get this information because it's only gonna be triggered when it actually is live on the website, but it's just pulling the um, actual page. Um, so we're just um, pulling in our previous chat information from our memory and this is our current message and this is just kind of um, what we're doing as far as the output that we want so between um, there's only really two values that we want it's either lead capture or general inquiry um, and then this is um, everything that we're storing right now for the JSON um, so essentially this is what um, the prompt looks like it's a bunch of if else statements um, so as soon as the first message comes in, we're going to do, um, if the message came, contains a question, it's going to um, ask us for the contact information. Um, else if, if the message comes in with the first name and last name, um, for example, my name is Jane Doe, it's going to pretty much route them to the uh, point where it's going to ask for an email. And that's just kind of um, how that works. Um, and then it will transition to the lead capture or it'll go to the general inquiry. Um, essentially once it collects all the information from the email to the phone number. Um, so in the lead capture, essentially all we're doing is kind of reprompting that information. Um, but we're kind of giving it um, steps and then we're kind of giving it the flows that we want. Um, for an example, um, this is how the logic works to create the session ID. Um, and what we're doing is we are, where is it? Right here, I believe. Um, we're just building a bunch of custom agents. And what I did is I'm storing all of the um, lead capture information in Superbase. So if we look at the Superbase real quick. All right, as you can see, I have a bunch of um, information here from testing. And what it does is um, it's all based on unique identifiers from the session ID. Um, and it can actually have multiple um, first name, last names. Um, this is more of a quick and dirty way of doing it. Eventually, I might try to figure out how to um, get the foreign keys and stuff working between um, the chat histories. So I'm actually just going to delete everything for now. Um, so that's kind of how the um, tools are working. Um, and they're all pretty much working the same exact way. Um, this one will create the session. This one will update the contact. This one will create the contact. And then this one will um, search for the um, contact information. Um, and then what we're going to do is um, we will do the first interactions. Um, so essentially, this is where we're collecting all of that information. Um, from the first name, last name, to um, the email, and then the phone number. Um, now I gotta clean this um, prompt up a little bit because I don't necessarily like um, how these um, prompts are, but all the logics thus far um, from our testing has been pretty sound. Um, and then once we go through um, and we collect all that information, then it's gonna go back and 
um, essentially go to the general inquiry once it collects um, the last um, bit of information from the phone number. So essentially the way the general inquiry works is we um, built a vector database and um, from there we also built a bunch of tools. Um, and essentially what the tools do is it just um, pulls product information, blog posts, um, and it'll also scrape um, the page that you're currently on. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go into the back end of this and I'm gonna disable TypeBot and then I'm gonna enable the JavaScript widget that we have um, running for the live chat. That way you can get an idea of how it actually functions. So, all right, so we're going to activate this. All right, and I am going to open Firefox and I'm going to go to a private window. Because I don't think I've opened it here yet. So let's go to bravewood.contentkit.site, which is our website. All right, wait one second. Let's clear all the cache. See if that actually fixes it. Okay, there we go. All right, so now when we open the window, um, it's not giving us the first name. One of the, um, you know, you know, pitfalls of not using TypeBot. Um, all right, so let's um, just put in my information. All right, so. Let's go into the executions and you'll get an idea of what's actually happening. All right, so what it did is um, it launched our tool where it's creating um, the um, user, it's adding our session ID, and then it's adding our first name and last name to the database. Um, and this is kind of uh, right here. Um, so this is the flow that it used. It couldn't actually find when it tried to search for the lead. All right, so um, from here, we went to our capture and I think I already went through all this anyways. Um, so let's go back to the bot and our email. You know what, let's do something different. Bill at um, gmail.com I didn't have that in there before. And we'll um, check what we're getting in Superbase after all of this is done. Like, I don't necessarily want it to, um, you know, force me to have this format. Um, that's something that we can correct on the back end. Um, it's just fixing the prompt a little bit. All right, so now what it, what it did, it is pretty much bring us to our um, general inquiry so we can learn more about the products and um, information so it collected all the information um, and as you can see it pretty much has collected all this information um, in the system and when we go to lead capture um, the only thing that we still don't have is the phone number um, I have to figure out that um, little bit of information um, pretty sure it has something to do with the prompt um, where it's not actually um, kicking off the tool and then storing it for us. Um, but that's pretty much how this is functioning. Um, and from here, I can just say, um, what do you have for products? Gonna give us all of the products and you know a pretty decent little table. Um, now, obviously, at scale, this is fine with um, eight products is what they have. Um, you know, one of the things with TypeBot is um, I can actually load it by category um, through the API directly, and um, you know that kind of makes it so 
you know you're not taking a long time to do queries um, because if there's like a hundred products here I don't even think the um, AI agent is actually going to be able to build that appropriately um, but you know this is what the client wants and you know that is kind of how everything works um, so we're on this page let's just say um, what page am I on it should tell us um, natural clean all right, so natural clean, give me a summary. And then we're just going to say find me a blog post um, that can help me install this. want to see if it's actually going to contact the vector store I say it's a 50 50 if it'll actually um, use it or not especially with this prompt but the cool thing is, is it's taking a bunch of context um, in a bunch of the tools to um, give us this information um, so beginners guide to floor installation um, and there we go I think all of that worked out pretty well close this and we're gonna go back into the agent real quick and I am going to find that last um, run and hopefully it actually used all right so it um, searched for the blog post through our custom tool um, it didn't look like it actually um, used the vector store it looked like it just used the um, search blog post and then it probably um, summarized it um, but yeah that's kind of um, how the tool works right now I'm not sure if this is um, the best approach. It's the approach that I'm using. Um, if you guys have any insights or better ideas, let me know in the comments below. 